a prototype of the ride, either a full-scale ride or a full-scale part of a ride. It, it's kind of a scary thing to ride on because we only built part of a ride. There's no lift or anything like that, and we get a big crane out there when it's time and lift this whole track piece up and sit it up on top and then let the thing go, and it does its gyrations around its own center line comes back and there's nothing there but the end of the track and a bunch of brakes. So it's kind of scary to see this this end of the pipes approaching at great speed and all of a sudden the brakes come on and you, you stop before going over the edge. And then I think that's been a pretty exciting ride by itself. All right, fasten your seatbelt, strap on your shoulder harness because we are going for a ride. I am staying right here on terra firma. Oh, come on, Lisa, it's going to be fun. Hey, hey it's a new T word, uh, titillating. Commenting. Hello. Topsy turvy. Should be fun. No. Six Flags Magic Mountain, just north of Los Angeles, is a favorite playground for Southern Californians and the many visitors who come to enjoy the year-round sun. Six Flags pioneered features that set many standards in the theme park industry, like one price tickets and live action shows. They've got rides that get you wet, rides that get your heart pounding, and rides that relocate your stomach. Magic Mountain boasts eight coasters, including two of America's greatest, Batman the Ride. And this one, Viper. <laughs> all right, Lisa. You all set? You ready to go? No, no, I'm not going. I'm going to stay right here, but you go ahead and have fun. I'll cheer you on from right here. Fine, fine. I'll make you a glass of warm milk. Wimp. If you're happy. <laughs> One of the uh, exciting parts of that, I think, is where you come off the top of the lift and you go down this curving, steep drop. It's a high-speed ride all the way, that thing is, and uh, quite intense. It's still probably the, uh, it's the premier coaster on the West Coast. We're about to experience two minutes of controlled terror, courtesy of Mr. Tumor. At the base of the first hill, we're going 68 miles an hour.
survive. Survive? I've been rejuvenated, energized, revitalized. Hey, at least you do not know what you're missing on that thing. I'm doing just fine. It would take an act of Congress to get me on one of those things, so forget well, it. Well, then I'll write my congressman. Eric. She's going to come around. Don't okay. you worry. Um, what's next? Well, we're going to come back to Six Flags Magic Mountain, but okay. first we're off to Sandusky, Ohio. This is Cedar Point in Sandusky, the home of three of America's greatest coasters, Magnum, Mean Streak, and Raptor. Cedar Point Amusement Park began its long history of family fun in 1870. The park is located on the Ohio shores of Lake Erie. Contained within its 364 acres, there's a total of 56 various rides. Water rides, spinning rides, kitty rides, live musical shows. Dolphins, sea lions, plus the nearby sandy beach of Lake Erie. But no matter where you go at Cedar Point, there's a roller coaster nearby. With 11 coasters, Cedar Point calls itself the coaster capital of the world. Three of them are among America's greatest, including this one, Mean Street. Mean Street was built in 1991 during an eight-month period. It took 300 miles of lumber to build at a cost of $7.5 million. Let's take it for a ride, shall we? the first hill on Mean Street. It's a favorite woody fan, and it packs a mean punch. Its first hill is 161 feet high. Top speed is 65 miles per hour. Riders treated to nearly three minutes of relentless speed, deep drops, and high curves. Here we go! XL200 at Cedar Point is a must for anyone wanting to experience the thrill of free fall. Magnum XL200 has one of the steepest first hills of any coaster in the world, and it's one of the fastest, 72 miles per hour. Magnum's first drop is a dizzying 195 feet at a 60 degree angle, and some of the unique features include three tunnels and an unusual pretzel loop. 
Magnum is another one of Ron Toomer's creations. It takes about a minute to get to the top, and you have plenty of time to think about what's going on. You can see the lake out there, Lake Erie's out in front of you. And you come over the top of this thing, and you know, that's pretty close to straight down. contribution to America's greatest is one of the new breed of coasters, Raptor. At a cost of $12 million, this has been the largest ride project in Cedar Point's 125-year history. Raptor is another Bolliger and Maviard creation, and it features a new element, never before used on an inverted coaster. At the far end of the track is a cobra roll, which flips the passengers over, spirals them upside down into a 180 degree roll, and then repeats the twisting movement in the reverse order. I'm just glad I'm not on board.
Do you really, Lisa? Um, no, not yet. <laughs> she can't hold out forever. We'll get her on one of these coasters. Uh, where's your next, my dear? To Southern Ohio. It's about a four-hour drive from Cedar Point. We find the home of our next roller coaster thrill, the Beat. Paramount's Kings Island is just north of Cincinnati. This is one of America's most popular family seasonal theme parks, entertaining more than three million visitors each year. Kings Island features world-class thrill rides, a 15-acre water fun area, dozens of places to get great food, and just as many places to buy souvenirs. Oh, and yes, the beast. Kings Island has several posters. King Cobra, America's first stand-up coaster. Vortex. And the Racer, a double-track wooden coaster with one train running forward and one running backward. But the big attraction here is the Beast. Let's take it for a ride. The Beast is the longest wooden coaster in the world. Its track is an incredible 7,400 feet, sprawling over 35 acres of densely wooded countryside. The ride takes an unprecedented 3 minutes 40 seconds from start to finish at speeds up to 65 miles per hour. There are three tunnels, one underground and two above ground. The first hill is 135 feet at a 45 degree angle. Top speed is almost 65 miles per hour. And near the end of the ride, watch out for the double helix. If it were an earthquake, it would be a 6.8. Hold on tight and don't stand up. Coaster that bears its name is not a roller coaster, but a jet coaster. 
As you enter, you're taken through various parts of an aircraft carrier, and finally, out onto the flight deck, ready for your flight as an F-14 pilot. The ride boat, 2,260 foot course, at speeds of up to 50 miles per hour. Following a 100 foot lift, you're taken through a 360 degree vertical loop, two 270 afterburn turns, and a full circle wing over, and a zero gravity roll. So you better hang on tight.
Ray here at Six Flags Magic Mountain during one of the club's excursions across the country riding America's greatest coasters. Hey Ray, what makes a coaster great? Well, I like the anticipation that I feel when I look at a roller coaster. I like what it does to my body. I like the idea of being out in the air and riding around laughing and giggling. <laughs> How about the scary part, the thrills? Uh, what's your fascination with roller coasters? My fascination is, is just to look at the design and, and think about what the man who designed it is, is uh, going to plan for my <laughs> body as I ride it. Oh, yeah. They're putting us through some changes. Yes. Uh, what kind of person is it, Ace? Ace has many different types of people. Uh, we're not all uh, alike at all. The only thing we have in common is that we all love roller coasters. We enjoy riding them. And there are new coasters coming all the time, right? That's right, Eric. We never know what coaster designers have in store for us next. Well, I say to the designers, if you're watching, keep them coming, because we love those coasters. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Ray, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Lisa, let's go for a ride. We're not going on Batman, are we? Maybe. Wish me luck, Ray. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> okay, that's my kind of coaster now. Let's go for a ride. That'd be fun. <laughs> Lisa, for that coaster, you have to be below this oh, line, and I don't qualify. Eric, it doesn't matter. I love Wiley Coyote. It'll be fun. I know you do, but you know what? I've got a coaster that is just perfect for big, brave grown-ups like us, so... Uh... I'm not very brave. Give <laughs> your hand. Come on. Batman the Ride was designed by Molliger and Mabelyard. We'll be hitting <laughs> 10 stories. 10 stories! 50 miles an hour, G-forces of four. Four the G's. features here are five inversions, two vertical outside loops, two corkscrews, and a near-zero gravity roll. Oh, no! The sensation is like a plane about to crash. Oh, thanks Lisa, for telling me We're going to have fun. of Florida is one of America's finest zoos, in addition to being the home of one of America's greatest roller coasters, Kumba. It's a 300-acre family park filled with thrill rides, live entertainment, and over 3,400 exotic birds and animals. There are all types of entertainment to suit any taste. rides for kids of any age. Don't miss the daily afternoon race between the Heron and the Monorail. Someone obviously enjoys it. Then there's the main attraction. Kumba! The word Kumba means roar in the African Congo language. And this coaster really roars. 
Designed by Bolliger and Mabillard of Switzerland and opened in 1993, Kumba introduced three first-of-a-kind elements. The camelback, a maneuver which creates three seconds of weightlessness while spiraling 360 degrees. A diving loop, which plunges you into a loop from a height of 100 feet. And a 108-foot vertical loop, the world's largest. During the two-minute, 54-second ride, you'll also be taken through a cobra roll, an oblique loop, vertical spiral, and a double corkscrew at speeds of up to 60 miles per hour and pulling three and three-quarter Gs. Do you want to get off now or, uh, uh-oh, too late now. on a wolf chase, unlike anything they've ever experienced. And this is Drakenfire, a coaster ride that's as hot as the name implies. The setting for these two exciting rides is one of the country's most beautiful parks, Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, Virginia, where you can take a Rhine River cruise, or hear an Italian opera in a lovely tiered Italian piazza while never leaving America's shores. It's a European theme park featuring authentically detailed 17th century European hamlets of England, France, Germany, Italy, and Canada. One of Bush Gardens' unique attractions is Haunts of the Old Country, a haunted castle adventure in 3D with added theater special effects including raindrops, fog, cold air, and flashes of light. There are over 30 water attractions like Roman Rapids, plus 30 other exhilarating rides, including the Loch Ness Monster. And our two focus coasters, Rock and Fire and Big Bad Wolf, both designed by Ron Toomer. Yeah, the Big Bad Wolf was probably uh, the first of the really good suspended coasters, and it's still an outstanding one. There's one place where you go through an arch and the thing swings, and it really looks like it's going to swing right out and hit this. And I think that's, that's another thing that gives the illusion of... Uh, of danger and speed. Big Bad Wolf's journey starts at the medieval boarding station. A leisurely stroll through a lush forest setting belies the thrilling ride ahead. The wolf is about to take us on a seemingly out of control race through a maze of buildings and obstacles. The ride takes about three minutes to travel the 2,800 feet of track at speeds of up to 48 miles per hour. And the chase is on.
through the German town, you get on the second lift, it's not quite as high as the first one, and then you just dive straight down onto what they call the Rhine River. Sky Coaster, a ride that combines the thrill of skydiving and hang gliding. 
It's a real kick. But the main attractions are still Thunderbolt and the Steel Phantom. Thunderbolt stands on the site of the old Pippin. The tunnel used by Pippin was retained, as were the first and last drops. The rest of the coaster was completely redesigned. Let's go for a ride. with the longest drop, 225 feet, and the fastest speed of any coaster in the world. At the bottom of the second hill, the train reaches 80 miles per hour. When the park decided to build another major coaster in 1991, they faced a basic problem, lack of space. And they solved it by using the same hillside property navigated by Thunderbolt. On its way to the bottom of the steepest hill, Steel Phantom's track goes through Thunderbolt superstructure. Oh, there's plenty of clearance, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, notice there are no arms in the air. The course is 3,000 feet long. Unlike most coasters whose first hill is the steepest, the Steel Phantom's second hill is the big one. Following the big drop, you'll go through four inversions, a loop, two boomerangs, and a corkscrew twist before returning to the station. How high can we go? How fast can we go? What are we going to do to the people? Is, is there a limit on how high they are? Well, if you'd asked me this 15 years ago, I'd have probably said, boy, we're getting close to the limit here. We'd gone 125 feet at that time, which was the biggest one in the world. And, uh, and I really thought, you know, we're not going to get all that much higher. Well, we are. We're way higher now. We're over 200 feet. And I think there's no limit now. I think the only limit we're going to see is, is what people will get on. Here we go.
Statue of Liberty, the World Trade Center, the Empire State Building, and Cyclone. Coaster enthusiasts recognize this as one of the most famous addresses in the world, 1000 Surf Avenue. It's the address of Astroland Amusement Park, home of one of the most famous roller coasters, Cyclone. It's a nostalgic wooden favorite built in 1927 and rebuilt and reinforced many times since then. It's a nostalgic favorite, yes, but still one of America's great roller coaster rides. Astroland is the successor to such historic Coney Island amusement parks as Dreamland, Luna Park, and Steeplechase Park. Today, Astroland is the only full-scale traditional amusement park in New York City. Admission to Astroland's Midway, as well as Coney Island's Boardwalk, is free. It's a pay-per-ride arrangement, just like the old days. Or you can buy a one-price ticket for all major rides. In addition to Cyclone, there's the Water Flume, if you like getting wet. Astro Tower for a spectacular view, and plenty of other rides and attractions. In 1988, Cyclone became an official New York City landmark. And in 1991, it was added to the New York State and National List of Historic Places. Cyclone is now owned by the City of New York and leased by Astroland. Back in 1927, the price for a ride on Cyclone was 25 cents, 35 cents on Sundays. Uh, today, it's $3 and worth every penny. Cyclone runs on 3,000 feet of track, packed into a surprisingly compact area. There are nine drops and six fan turns. The big drop is 85 feet high at a 60 degree angle. Top speed is 60 miles per hour, and the ride takes one minute, 50 seconds. Pay attention to the sign.
Okay, but uh, let's say goodbye first. Okay, goodbye. Come on. Goodbye. Come on, Luke. We gotta go again. Why? Well, that pretty much wraps up our show. You've just seen America's greatest roller coasters, the thrills in 3D. And we want to thank the American coaster enthusiasts. In particular, Ray Ubroff. And all the parks for their generous support making this program possible. Are we at the top yet? 